Under traditional classification schemes, Monera is the name of the kingdom of bacteria. But in most modern textbooks, scientists, due to the big diversity in the group that we normally call bacteria, because there's such diversity, scientists are starting to split that into two other groups called domains. One of these domains is called eubacteria. The other domain is called archaea. So what are some of the characteristics of the eubacteria or true bacteria? Well, they're all prokaryotic, which you should know what that means. They have cell walls made of a mesh between polysaccharides and amino acids called peptidoglycan. They have what's called naked DNA. What does that mean? It just means it doesn't have the histone proteins that eukaryotic DNA, like ours, is wrapped around to help organize it. They have what I sometimes call prokaryotic style ribosomes, which if you really want to look at the details of, go ahead and Google it, but most of the time you don't need to know that. And what are some examples of it? This is a huge group with huge diversity within it. It includes the photosynthetic cyanobacteria that are a major source of uh, oxygen and food in many uh, ecosystems. There's the nitrogen-fixing bacteria that are in our soil that help provide materials for our plants. There's lots of different kinds of eubacteria. The domain archaea is a little bit unusual. Now, they are prokaryotic, however, they have unusual cell walls made out of not peptidoglycan, but these weird other polysaccharides. Even their cell membranes have unusual polysaccharides, sorry, have unusual phospholipids within them. They don't have naked DNA like the majority of the prokaryotes do. Instead, they have histone proteins wrapped around their DNA. They have eukaryotic style ribosomes. These two factors are one of the major reasons why scientists now think that ultimately the eukaryotes, like ourselves and plants, ultimately evolve from the archaea. Now, they also have a number of different uh, roles in the environment. Many of them are methanogens, which means they're the things that in your large intestine, and especially in the large intestine of things like cows, they're the things pr breaking down uh, some of the undigested uh, polysaccharides to produce methane. Halogens, they inhabit really weird, unusual uh, environments. And the halogens, they love salty water because by living in that kind of environment, they are, uh, they're able to avoid the competition from a lot of the other creatures. So usually they get lumped together into this group called extremophiles, which simply means they love the extreme environments. And those are the bacteria.